Hello, and welcome to Great Hang, the greatest hang that's ever hanged. I'm your hang, Tim McLovin, coming to you with your other hang, Micah Fox. Hello, Micah. Hey, Timmy. How are you? Fucking great, man. Oh, well, that's good. An F right out the gate. We don't... Oh, I'm sorry to offend our sponsors. Micah, it, well, YouTube takes away monetization if you have an F within the first seven seconds. You want to do it again? No. We don't get monetized on this channel anyways. Oh. How are you? I, I'm... I feel bad now that I know we don't make any money. <laughs> I was doing pretty good, but now now I feel bad. Well, that's good. That's a good way to start out the Fuck. show. I'm hoping that our guest will probably bring you back into feeling good. I hope so, too. One of the funniest guys I know, Micah. I love to watch him perform. Love it. Absolutely love it. it has a show every Wednesday at my place of business, The Gutter. One of the best shows in New York. Comedians, you should know. It's Mike Leibovitz. Hello, Mike. Oh, hey, guys. I was wondering if I was here. Yes, you yes. are. Now you're allowed to talk. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Well, thanks for having me. I, I, know, I know I've told you guys this before, but this is actually my favorite podcast. Yes, you told us right before this happened, and Micah said, save it for the podcast. And, and, so, and we've started, right? We've yeah. And now, we're we in it, it. now your compliment counts. Yeah. No, this is my favorite uh, podcast. Most podcasts make me really angry. Yeah. Because it's like you just see these clips, and it's these people, and they're like, you're, they're like uh, you're like what are they laughing at? What yeah. what is so fucking funny? That's what's different between <laughs> our podcast and theirs is we don't laugh at anyone's jokes. Right, right. It's more yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like this isn't funny. No, but I like how mean you are to Tim. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, if you like that, you guys should check out. It's on our Patreon right now, which I need to have you on our live show. We've I started a live show at the gutter on the first Sunday of the month. Wait, you started a live show where I do my show? Yes, okay. and I also kept. We call it comedians you I, shouldn't know. I also, <laughs> I also kept the comedians you should know ba sign up behind our show. Okay, and, and Micah, I, Micah yelled at me about that. I'm really pissed about it because he started it. Okay, so like he just starts going okay, and I'm like trying to film it. He doesn't tell me like so I haven't even pressed record yet. The sign's still up in the background, just zero production effort. Mm -hmm. It's like we had so much time beforehand, and then all of a sudden just starts on a dime with none of the shit ready. Infuriating, really. Yeah. No, that sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah. You mean so, right for Tim. That sounds right for Tim, but that's, yeah. I mean, that's just like, sometimes you just got to fucking not prepare and just go. Yeah. And not get it done correctly. Right. And waste your time. And just have it be bad. Yeah. Like sometimes. It was a good show. Right. But, or just have it be worse than it could have been. Like it could have been better, right? Yeah. If there was preparation. Like if we hadn't stolen your branding and had it hanging up in the background the whole right, time. Right, right. Like if you'd done your own show. Yes. Instead right. of doing my show right. without permission. Yeah. That like, for example. But I figure that's free advertising for your show to the seven people that came to watch mine. See, this is the thing. Okay. So we started <laughs> this show at the gutter like six years ago. And they didn't have comedy shows back there. They just had bands. Right. And we were like, hey, let us try and do a comedy show back there. And they're like, no, comedy doesn't work here. And we were like, let us try. So they let us try, and it worked. And we were like, okay, we'll do a weekly show here. But let's have you guys promise not to have any other comedy shows back here because oh, no. we don't want it to dilute the brand. Right? There are what, so many comedy right. shows there. So cut to after COVID, um, Jack takes over running, running the bar. Yeah. Uh, running the back room, and now it's all comedy shows. Back I there. didn't know that that and was now our our uh, <laughs> attendance <laughs> is suffering because people come out to your show with my fucking sign. No, they didn't. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> people stick their head in and they're like, this is bullshit, and they leave, yeah. and then they never come to my show. All so right. thank you very much for ruining my show. You know what? You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. you're very welcome. And I, I've never Somebody been... had to, and it sure as hell wasn't going to be me. <laughs> I, uh, no, it was, um, I didn't know that, or I wouldn't have done the show back there. I didn't know you guys had a non-compete for the back room. It, it's over now. It's over. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I want you to keep doing your show there. I love it when I see you there. I just thought it was easy. I love easy it when I see you there, too. Thank you. Because yeah. I work Maybe Sundays. Are you going to be there tonight? Maybe. I said maybe. Uh, I'll be there tonight because I, be I have a show around the corner. Oh, cool. I have a show there. Nice. Well, Where's perfect. your show? At whatever, 44 Barry, so it's like a five-minute walk. Yeah, just move it to the gutter. It's All like, right, I'll come on over there. Uh, they do a show now at the bottom of this like, like Molly dance club. It's so weird. A Molly dance club? Yeah, it's like it's like so the walls like glow and shit. It's like so obviously you're supposed to be on a shit ton okay. of drugs when you're there. And then everyone's like, hey, so my dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a nice little juxtaposition there. Mm -hmm. But Michael was very mean to me at the show. 
Good. Oh right. And uh, we so started you'd like out. It. We started out. I Micah's would've. immediately berating me about everything that's happening in the show. And then I said, Micah, could you please not be mean? And she goes, Okay, fine. Tim can read and is not fat. And Did then, I say that? Yes. And then <laughs> everyone laughed really hard. <laughs> and that's on our Patreon. It's our we because we do, and it's not like a real stand-up comedy show. Right. We've covered that. Yes. Well, cause, but. <laughs> We do. Um, <laughs> Damn. Just kidding. We, just kidding. we read from um, here. Hold Reddit on. Let advice. Me, let me take. The, let me move that up there. There we go. Yeah, we read from Reddit advice and give our takes on what people should do. So it's more of a panel show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's did great. you have that in your your non compete clause that they couldn't do panel? No, shows? no, no. And yeah, it's like it's totally British style panel it, shows with dry humor. It's totally cool. It's totally cool. Like we talked to Jack about it. He was like, "I want to do more comedy shows back there," and we were like, "That's cool." So yeah. it's, it's totally. Oh, cool. so this has already been agreed upon, yeah, and yet yeah, you yeah, used yeah. our show as a forum to air your grievances <laughs> <laughs> to make excuses for why I'm too lazy to maintain and my now, email list and pack the room like I used and to. And now That's I correct. have to make a clip out of this. And now everyone's going to think that Mike's going to be freaking pissed because I'm going to take everything out of context. And oh, Tim's going to get fired shit. from his job. <laughs> this is, oh, Tim fuck. has a job? Oh, I, yeah, that's right. At the gutter. Yeah, yeah I work yeah. there because I work on Sundays. So I was like, this is easy. I just work and then put the show on right after work. Hey, can I say a funny tag to something you said a few minutes ago? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you said, you can, since you could cut everything up anyway, yeah, sure. you told Micah not to be mean. And Micah said, uh, what did You're going to need to hold your mic just a little closer. What, what did Micah say? Uh, Micah said, said it. Oh yeah, that's right. Tim can read and is not fat. And everyone laughed. Yes. Right, right. But you told her to not be mean, not to lie. <laughs> okay, there, <laughs> there we go. All right. I was going to say that. Okay, I'll cut all I that I realize together. that being mean to Tim, I think, might be my sexual fetish. <laughs> Tell me about it, brother. <laughs> it's a nice time. People love it. That's what people come to the show for. They mostly come for the news segment. But then they stay for Micah being mean to me, even though we don't have any news segments this week because I lost it on the Patreon. But if you want to check it out, check out patreon.com slash great hang, which is a perfect segue into this next segment of the show. Plugs. You got anything to plug? Plug your shit, bitch. Me? Yeah. Oh, my butthole. All, All right. right. Let's on. go. No. Uh, what's coming up? Oh, I think I'm headlining. Um, a secret show this weekend that I can't tell you about, <laughs> but it's in well, Pittsburgh. This, well, this comes out next week, so that all be far gone from oh, then. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. So last week I headlined this show that <laughs> should have been at in Pittsburgh. I'll just plug my show, Comedians You Should Know, every Wednesday and Saturday at the gutter, or also maybe on some other night where they just have the sign up. Nice. And it truly is one of the best shows in New York and in Chicago. It's crazy. Bi coastal. Yeah, we just most of the it. dudes are bi, and it's on a coast. No, it's that's not bi coastal. Oh. You have to have be on the other coast to be bi coastal. Well, they call the Midwest the third coast because it's on the Great Lakes. No, yeah. they don't. Yeah, they well, do. Well, some no, people they do. Don't. No yeah. one's ever said people that. People in well, Chicago say that. I just said it. <laughs> bi coastal. People with a you big, can be tri coastal. People with a big half of a big sloppy beef sandwich in their in their mouth say it sometimes. That's right. They go, oh, this jarred air so hot. Anyways, I'm gonna go chip some of my mouth in the coast. They yeah. say. Yeah, that's right. I sure love coming out to the coast so I can have a wet sandwich. <laughs> yeah, damn, they love to dip their freaking sandwiches out there. Yeah. Michael, what do you got? Dip 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 now. <laughs> uh, oh, shows. Uh, turns out I'm going to be in Austin this weekend. Um, this comes out next week. I'm just bragging. God, chill out. And I'll probably get in trouble from work because I bought plane tickets accidentally before I realized I was going to have a meeting. So that's fun. If you're from my comp work, I'm at work. And uh, <laughs> Micah was at work last I was, week. I was at work last week. And uh, what else do I got coming up? I don't know. Always come to just. You know, come to Cobra Club for every Friday night at 9 o'clock to see Live from Outer Space. That's in Bushwick, you know, and, um, you know, check my socials. I'm on threads now. It sucks. Oh, it's so good. No, it's the worst place I've ever been. Oh, it's the best place you go. No, it's so sad and lonely. It's like being stuck at school. Everyone else is on a field trip. I feel happy and surrounded by friends. Really? I don't know. I mean, I haven't posted a thread yet. But um, I, Twitter was dead to me like so long ago that it's sort of, I don't know. Oh, it's like a dopamine detox. You post something and then you maybe get one like in five days. Oh, right. It's There's a true that. nightmare. No, nobody likes anything. What's the point? Well. I'm there for the likes. I want that hit. <laughs> I want that dopamine hit. I want to feel good. Yeah. Uh, you know how much of a big deal I was on Twitter? 
You were a medium deal on Twitter. But for a while, I was a big deal before big deals became bigger. Uh-huh. Right. You were the, like the original big deal before they supersized the yeah. deals. Yeah, listen. Yeah. You just didn't catch up to the other. You were a big deal, but you couldn't stay with the real big deals. No, my, my tweets what really, it sounds st- like. really started to plummet. I couldn't keep up with the algorithm. I talked too much shit on Musk. Yeah. But listen. <laughs> yeah, you think that's what it was? Yeah, no, I think I just fell off. But listen. Isn't it also that like only weird right wing trolls are using it now? No, some of us are on there yelling at those people. Yes. Okay. There but is I'm not some one of those real, either. There is some real hardcore leftists on there who spend their days absolutely just obsessed with those right wing trolls. Yeah, okay. This sounds awful. It's, yeah. uh, it's awful, but it's there's also way more funny shit on it still than threads. Okay, oh, I believe yeah. that. I mean, black Twitter is still popping off on a very regular basis, and it's A-plus stuff. And okay. the comments are truly horrendous. And it's great to look at. My problem with Twitter was it was just always too much reading. Oh, yes. I, I, that's what I hated about it to begin with. And the writing part, to be quite honest. Yeah. I'm, People, always, I'm always tweeting out, like, typos and shit. Yeah, and then they get mad at you. They're like, oh, and I'm like, bitch, shut up. That's how I talk. Yeah, yeah. I talk misspelled. <laughs> yeah, I talk fucked up. If anyone talks misspelled, it's Tim. That's right. And if you want to hear me nice. talk misspelled, you can come to the Looney Bin in Little Rock, Arkansas, September 13th through the 16th, two days after 9-11. So come to that. I'll be with friend of the show, Tom Takar. He'll be, I'm letting him headline for me, so I thought that was pretty nice. <laughs> And, uh, I think that'll be a nice time. He said it's the worst weekend he's ever done. So if you're in Little Rock, come out to the Looney Bin. It'll be a nice time. He, he probably wants you saying that on the internet. <laughs> I think he said it. I said it on his show oh, with yeah, him. Right on. That's fine. <laughs> um, I think this. So is this why we're doing the whole plug thing? I feel like you were the only one who actually had a plug ready. No, I just like to do plugs early so that people don't just turn the show off at the end when you do you start doing your plugs. We want people to turn the show off right at the right beginning. Right at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to stop laughing. I forgot we're not supposed to laugh. No, we are that. supposed to laugh. laugh. I was making a joke not then, our... and I'm, not, I'm making one now. You are making one now? I don't know. Okay. We're not big for retention. We just want early listenership and then for it to fall off immediately and that but you know where we don't do that is tough questions so check out the tough questions podcast with me and jeff sheen and then follow me at hot underscore comic 69 on instagram all right wait is that your real podcast tough questions yeah well, well that's this is his real podcast. this is my real podcast tough questions is my podcast with sheen Oh, okay. That's Sheen's show. I sit there like Ed McMahon style and laugh at stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then do all the tech stuff and fuck that up too. But uh, that show's pretty good. That's David Drake's favorite show. So we've got one producer for CYSK loving this show. David Drake loves that show. And now he likes this show because of that. No, this this show is so good. <laughs> and now that I'm like here in this space, it's even better. Like, Is it fulfilling your fantasy of being in the middle of me and Tim fighting? You know what? Like in my mind... This show was produced around a table. It used to be. Okay, maybe maybe it was in my mind because it came in through my eyes that way. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I'm I'm digging this couch. I like how my fat thighs stick to it when they get. This couch is really bad too. You sink into it. Everyone has bad posture. You can see everyone's nuts. It's not. I'm into that. (laughs) It's not worse than Sheen's couch. Sheen's couch. I was sitting there like this, like I was damn Humpty Dumpty and shit. Looked terrible. Is that how Humpty Dumpty sits? I don't know. I Doesn't no... he sit in like pieces on the ground? Oh, yeah. I guess he does. I guess he's walking on the thing and falls down. Anyways. My uh, my couch is, is worse because my dog always, she eats the arm and uh... she vomits on the rest of it. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just all part of the couch, but it's like being moved from one part to the other. You and know? then the children. It's like how the Native Americans plot their agriculture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you turn up one part to feed the other. Exactly. And then the children That's don't right. pay any attention, sit in all of it, just smish it right into the couch. Yeah, they like to sit in the vomit. I, you know, <laughs> I sometimes put them in a vomit, in the vomit as like a punishment. Ah, uh, yes. If you don't listen to your father, it's vomit couch for you children. Well, I punish them for being good because uh, I'm like an alternative parent. Yes. You know? send, them so, to, send them to uh, Montessori schools. Yeah, you finish your homework, go sit in the vomit. <laughs> <laughs> We're Leibovitzes. We underachieve. Uh, this is perfect. This, You know what, Mike? That was a little bit that rolls right into our next segment. Spit that bit. Spit. If you've got a bit, bit that you're working on, Mike and I will help you punch it up. 
Because we're two of the greatest writers in the stand-up comedy scene. Okay. Yeah, all right. I have a... He's, like, trying to get along with the premise. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I give out my bit for free on your show. <laughs> right, right. And, and you, quote, unquote, help. Well, I would no, I was just trying to think about what, what to do for, for this. Okay, here. well, so here's... Here's a bit that I feel like I can't open with. Hell yeah. Okay, so I was reading. Oh, yeah, okay. So people already don't believe you. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was reading. I don't know if I can use this one. But I was reading somewhere that um, f- between 1950 and the present, um, something like uh, 78% of all lines spoken in movies have been spoken by male characters. Nice. Okay. Which is obviously, you know, bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. Because we all know that women can't shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's that's true. a good bit. Yeah. Okay. So that's the bit. So that's a bit I was thinking about that I probably can't tell. But you could tag. So you could tag that bit, right? You could do that. Everybody could be like, ah. Uh, and then you could be like, listen, listen, listen. I know. That it probably is true because it's been mostly men that write those characters and finally wrote the perfect woman who knows when to shut her fucking mouth. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes it better. <laughs> See, actually, so I think I didn't communicate it properly. I don't mean that it's bullshit like it's not a true statistic. Yeah. I mean like it's an injustice. Mm-hmm. It's an affront to reality. Yes. I got that. Yeah, okay. But at first I didn't. I was like, which part is bullshit? That's what it hinges on. Yeah, no, so bullshit the is the bitch wrong word. The says talkingly. Yeah. Bullshit is the wrong word, which is... So you'd be like, so you'd just be like, that can't be true. That can't be a true statistic, right? Is that what you're saying? No, it's not even that it can't be a true statistic. It's that it's a statistic that is... You know, I'm I I'm taking I'm taking no I'm taking that the statistic is true. Yes. But I'm saying that it is an example of Hollywood misrepresenting reality. Ah, uh, uh-huh, because yes, because yes, bitches yes. be talking. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bitches love to chat. Yeah. So that's what you say. You'd be like, which really shows the misrepresentation in Hollywood because bitches never shut the fuck up. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. I think that would work. Now, opening with it, I think you should do that too. Well, if you're going to tell that one, you got to open with it. Yeah, I think you, you got to have, have the right words. Then the mouthy broads in the room will prove your point. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. And then yeah. you'll have some good crowd work clips. Yeah. You know, go famous on TikTok. Have everyone come out to your show. Be disappointed that you have jokes. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then they come out to your show and they're like, oh, and you're like, no, no, we, I don't do, I, do, I only do that on the internet. But, um. That's I like that. Yeah, I think you just need to word it a little bit better where you explain the concept that you do believe that it's true. Right. No, that's why I came here to spit that bit because I knew I didn't have the words worked out. Now, I'm not a word guy. I'm more of a smile, kind of laugh at my own shit guy so people know when to laugh. Well, that's why I was confused by the premise of this segment. Well, it's for Micah. Micah's a good words guy. Yeah, yeah. You, You a big word guy? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I studied uh, words in college. Did you major yeah. in words? Yeah, I majored in words, and I minored in letters. Okay. Uh, <laughs> With the concentration in syllables. <laughs> the concentration mm-hmm. in camp. Um, listen, you could also like tag it with some kind of reference to the Bechdel test. You know, be like, that's what, do you know what the Bechdel test is? No, but I want to. Okay, so there's some feminist lady, Bechdel, who was like, because of this thing, because no women ever fucking talk in movies. Okay. Like... Something passes the Bechdel test when it, two women are talking to each other on screen and they are not talking, talking about, about a man. men. I've heard of this. So you could. I like, just didn't remember her name because she's a woman. Right. Thank yeah. you. Right. But you can't tell that by the name. So that's really a missed <laughs> opportunity. Tell they her. should call it the Bethdel test. Beth is a lady's name. Make you think of a lady. Oh, that's a good point. Goes against what he was saying, though, which is he doesn't remember names of women because they're unimportant. No, but this is not true. This is me saying something that is not true. No, we're going to clip it out how we need to. I understand. And you are a woman hater. Yes. Which you could have, which, I mean, that was proven the second you agreed to do the show. Why why is that? Classic man hating show. This is a, (laughs) oh, no, it isn't. Woman hating show, I mean. Yeah, this is a classic woman hating show. Men are always right on this show. That's right. To pass the Bechdel test, a work must 
um, feature at least two women. This is what I've already explained. These women must talk to each no, other. It's, all, it's more authoritative when this it comes is, to He's him. mansplaining the Bechdel test. I'm reading it. Right I'm now. reading the, I'm reading the definition. <laughs> oh, I guess if Webster was a man and put it in his fucking dictionary, then I'm fucking mansplaining it. How about you sit there and listen for a second and maybe not prove Mike's bit right? No, I guess you're. I guess he's right. Women never shut the fuck up. <laughs> Go on, Tim. I was gonna, <laughs> <laughs> and their conversation must concern something other than a man. That's what I fucking said. I know. I was just reading the actual definition of it. I don't even remember what the tag was going to be now. It's been so long since I brought it up. <laughs> oh. I didn't even mean to use this bit for this segment. I don't even know why I did. It's something within you really wanted to make it work, and you knew we were the people to help you get there. <laughs> Maybe that's it. No, I think I had like a bit that I was going to work on, but it felt too serious. Mm. Oh, yeah, because your other comedy bits are very serious. Well, <laughs> kind of. What's the topic of your other one? Death. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I like that stuff. Yeah, we, 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 di- we dine on death. Yeah. I talk about people dying in my act all the time. I mostly just bring it up and move on. I just be like, my uncle's dead, and then I'll go into something else. Does that help? Yeah. You ever yep. do that? <laughs> <laughs> There's classic Tim not being a woman and just talking about himself for no fucking reason. Huh? Wait, but what was the tag that you forgot? Something about Beck like, be like, that's what this is what Bechdel was fighting for. Like more representation of women never shutting the fuck up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's yeah. good, Micah. Yeah. Do we need the definition You're again? You're good with words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, read it one more time. I lost But this it. time, say it to a woman. <laughs> say it to me, Timmy boy. I just wish everyone would fucking give women, you know, the respect they deserve. You want to know what's crazy about the Bechdel test is it doesn't pass the Bechdel test. What, how's that? Because you're supposed to not be talking about a man. And in the definition of it, you're talking about not talking about a man. So a man is in it. So two women talking about the Bechdel test would not pass its own test. Wow. Holy fucking shit, Micah. Wait. Oh, my fucking God. You can't use that. That's my new bit. (laughs) No, I mean, this is definitely your bit. It has like (laughs) nothing. At this point, it's got nothing to do with what I was talking about. Well, it does, I guess. It actually directly relates. But (laughs) I wonder if that is that really true. If two women are talking about the Bechdel test. Yeah. They're talking about women talking about a man. Yeah. They're not talking about a man. That's, it's, I don't know. It's like a lower order of magnitude. Tim, get Bechdel on the phone. All right, I'll get her. Beck. Should we call Sam Evans? <laughs> oh, man, my phone's not down here. Oh, no. God damn it, we always call Sam Evans. I actually think he's working right now. It, he's like the judge for these Bechdel cases? No, he's just the only guy we ever call on the podcast. Oh, okay. So, oh, we've called Tom Takar one time, but that was to yell at him for putting orange juice in his cereal. What? He doesn't exactly. like. How did you know he was doing that? I lived with him for fucking like three years, and also he likes it more than putting milk in his cereal. This is well. He also claimed it was healthier, which is insane. <laughs> Well, I mean, either way, it's not healthy, I don't think. Like, no, orange like juice cereal. Orange juice is so bad for you. It spikes your insulin like crazy. It's like worse than Coca-Cola. It's horrendous for you. It got presented as a health food. It's not. If you're listening out here drinking orange juice, spit it out. But it will help kick in the psilocybin harder. 100%. That's true. And dopey. Last time, the last time I put a bunch of mushrooms in orange juice and let them sit overnight, me and my buddy did that, put an eighth of mushrooms in our orange juice and then we let it sit overnight and then we just kind of drank whatever it was in there. He had a seizure while we were peeking and I had to drag him into his own home. Wait, oh, seriously? That, yeah. My buddy Cheese. Does we, he get seizures? Is that yeah, a, okay? So, so what happened? You just scare the fuck out so of him. So what happened was I get him into the house and he like wakes up and I go, hey man, you just had a seizure. He goes, oh, that happens when I get too high sometimes. Jesus Christ. And I was Christ. like, you should tell people that before you're about to get too high with them. That used to happen to me sometimes when I would get too high. You'd get, you'd have a seizure? Yeah, I had a seizure on mushrooms one time. I'm never doing mushrooms again. This is it. And I had a seizure in a Denny's one time. Oh, you got too high off the Grand Slam? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> too he mu- started ordering a Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity. They're <laughs> like, sir... I had an eggs over my seizure. I think I was I think I was uh, fucked up at the Denny's is what happened. <laughs> 
And um, I had taken a week off of no, I had taken a month off of smoking weed mm -hmm. because I was in this play in college, and I think I showed up to one of the rehearsals like really high, and um, the director was like, "Hey man, I'll tell you what, like, uh, he never accused me of being high, but he was that like, was if nice you move. cannot smoke any weed from now until like when we open, I'll give you an eighth at the cast party." Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. That's fair. So I took a month off of smoking weed, and then I got this eighth at the cast party, and I smoked the whole thing. Holy like, shit. I, I think I like... <laughs> what the fuck? I just like smoked it all to myself. Let's go. Because I was, you know, I'm like trying to make up for lost time or something. Yeah, you're like, these brain cells better get, hurry up and die. And then I think I took some other drugs, and then I went to Denny's, and then I had a seizure at the Denny's, and then I had to go to the hospital. Because <laughs> when you're when you have a seizure in Denny's, like your friend can't just drag you back into your house, right? Yeah. The, the waitress is like, "I'm calling an ambulance," and then you have to go to the hospital. This really the only phone number most waitresses know at Denny's is nine one one. Yeah, yeah. They just they just go to their recent calls. <laughs> yeah. uh, Micah, yeah. It's time for our next segment. Oh, hot take hot of the takes. week. Oh, cool. This is where Micah gives us a scenario. And we only get a little bit of information, and then we have to give our take on it immediately. And then we get more information, and we get to find out if we were right or wrong. Well, okay, so and we go in order or something? Yeah. No, no, I mean, yeah, you can go first. It doesn't matter. That's oh, the description. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. That's the description of the, of the segment when I'm doing um, our Am I the Asshole? But this is something that I'm finding circulating on Twitter right now, and oh. I really wish we had a black person it for this conversation, and we don't. So that's Mike? all right. Get the oh, shoe great. polish. Okay. So this is <laughs> okay. all right. This is coming to us from Jonathan Perk at Jonathan Perk on Twitter. Serious question for well-meaning white people. It's never how is how is white spelled? Is yeah. it Y T? No, it's okay. spelled oh. like the color of okay. your skin. Okay. Oh jeez. Although white is not actually a color; it's a shade. It's a presence of all colors. Yeah. When you show up at a hmm. get together like this, and I'll show you guys a picture. Do you notice there are zero black people or nah? Follow up. If so, do you say something about it to who? Please be honest. This is a safe space in parentheses unless you say something uh, dumb or racist. Now, you may Micah, look. Micah, this is just teeing me up to I get know. in damn trouble. I what know. are you doing? <laughs> so here's the picture. Here okay. is the picture. It looks oh. like a Land's End catalog <laughs> or some kind of. No. Now, okay. this is why there we should are, have a I'm black gonna, person moderating you, this send conversation. Send that picture to me so I can put it in. I'll put it in during the on the YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, of course, like and subscribe. But I'll put in the I thought this picture. was Jennifer Aniston. So at first I was like, what is this? But like, okay. You're it's, a, a, it's like a, it's a, a, a Game of Thrones <laughs> length table. So it's a giant long table. There's about, I want to say, 30 people at it. Everyone is white, obviously, as based on the thing. So there's no, there's no black people. They don't mention any other races. So do you say something? So I, first of all, I, I, do I notice? Yes, I do notice. Mm -hmm. Do I say something? Probably not. No, because, yeah, what are you going to say? Yeah, I mean, it's probably like a family reunion or something well, like that, and they're the all white. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Everyone's like, comes to like, yeah, my, I can't just go recruit a black person into my family. Yeah. You like, know? Oh, let me just go get divorced and remarried real quick. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, but why didn't you marry a black person to begin with, Mike? Yes, Ooh. Michael. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. What? Were you racist? I, well, I am, although I'm not sure if that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I say something immediately. I go, what the fuck is this honky bullshit? And then I go, and then I leave. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wish I could believe you, but I go home with you for Christmas every year. Oh, uh, well, my mom's pretty Italian, though. Yeah. My mom's one of those kinds of Italians that thinks she's a person of color. Oh, yeah. Well, she used to be. Yeah. She, she got called a mulatto as a child, and they threw rocks at her and called her the N-word. Okay. Well, she's from Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's what happens. There. She was about as dark as you get in Wisconsin. Land yeah. of a thousand nights. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I had a friend who's our age, and he said he and his friends used to sh throw pennies at Jews, and that was like in the nineties. What the hell? And he we was didn't telling that any. story for fun. He's like, "Want to hear some fun shit I used to?" Hey, leave of it. Check out this funny shit. <laughs> that would no, piss uh, me off because pennies don't even aren't even worth anything. Well, yeah, that's the point. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just saying. But throw, I, throw some real coin at me. But I think it was like fun for them to watch the cheap money grubbing Jews bend down and pick up these so worthless they would go coins. For it? Yeah, God this damn. was back in the 90s when a penny was worth about four cents. I don't know. I was around in the 90s, believe it or not. And I remember they sucked. Well, They're... let me ask you this. Now. Was that you? That was me. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> would you pick up a, a nickel? No. I would yeah. you pick up a quarter? Yes. No. Tim, I would pick up a quarter and hand it to Tim. I picked up a penny yesterday. Tim is poor. So this is what I do. When I see a penny and it's face up. You pick it up? I pick it up. If it's face down, I flip it over so that someone else can pick it up and have good luck. Yes. Aww. Find a penny, pick find a penny, pick it up. The rest of the day you'll have good luck. He's like, You're I'm into whimsical anti Semitism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You no, know, I mean I don't know if he was into it. He was like confessing to me. He was like, Hey, this is what we used to think, but like now you're my friend and you are Jew and You are Jew. <laughs> Tears in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> pennies <laughs> jangling right, around. He gave in me his a whole bucket. handful of pennies. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I won't even make you bend over for him. <laughs> they're in they're in a sock. I think someone <laughs> yeah. threw change at me when I was on stage once. It's like a distant memory. And you've sort of half blacked it out. I it just I was so, I think I didn't really even get what was happening at the time because it was like I I didn't know that kind of racism. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. like I was like, what the fuck? I don't, I'm making money right now. Fucking idiot. You know. Anyway. Bottom so, line is, I get upset when we have parties over here, and the black people I invite to the party don't come, and then everyone here is a honky bitch. And then it looks racist. Right, and right. then it looks like you didn't invite any black people, but it turns out that just they don't like you. Right. And, but normally Dan Yang comes, so there's one Chinese guy, which I think is pretty okay, so that's normally good. Yeah, yeah. normally it's good to be pretty okay. Yeah. yeah. There's, pr- there's some pretty toxic normally. shit going on in the comment section here, too, <laughs> if you can imagine. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> on the Twitter Shocking. In, on but, Twitter. Well, because people are like, well, you know, like, I don't know, like, sometimes, you know, we have, like, an Asian person or whatever, and they're like... I forget what it was, but he was just, I was like, he's like, it's not just black people. And he was like, and the guy who posed the question, he's like, I didn't say all black people. And it says it right in the thing. So like the guy posing this question is maybe the most toxic person ever. (laughs) You find it. So I know he's gaslighting people and can be proven wrong immediately. Right. And he's white probably. Oh yeah. Is he white, Mike? Micah? No, this guy's black, of course. And the people, I've, the thing is, it's shown up in my feed like five times. Why is it shown? And they're like, and it's always like some black person of Africana studies and a professor of black school and like being like, I want to see if who of my followers, what they think. And I'm like, what the fuck is this test? Like, do you really, do you <laughs> it's really the black Dell test? Like, <laughs> like, is that what they really want? It's like, huh? Fuck. I better hurry up and go force a black person to hang out with me. You know? Well, you know where you're not seeing this in your feed repeatedly. Yeah. Threads. Threads. Yeah. It's not in threads. It's also not it's, in the One Piece world that I hang out in on Twitter. No, it's the It's all it's One Piece spoilers baiting. and manga and fucking anime where I'm at. Is that where you hang? I hang in the anime section, baby. Uh, uh, <laughs> is that where the bronies hang? No, the bronies are even further down from there. But is that like a subsection of... The bronies, yes. The, so the, the bronies do hang with the anime people at the conventions. Okay. But they, and I'm sure a lot of them do like anime. But bronies are a separate thing from anime guys. So My Little Pony is not anime. No. It's, it's, it's American. It's American. It's sort of anime style, though. It's anime it? styled, but it is uh, an American product. Okay. It's like how um, Avatar The Last Airbender is anime styled, but is American. Well, I think it was. Uh, I think it was. A joint production that was American and Japanese. Yeah, but I don't think it's fully considered anime. It's so much better than what we had when we were kids. Like it's so I watched that with my oldest, Isaac. Yeah. When he was a kid. And it's like I, I was just like, when I was your age, I was watching He Man. And yep. this shit is so much better. Yeah, the dude, uh Last Airbender is really incredible. It's, it's so a good. shame what happened that they ruined the movie. I know. The movie was really bad and you, it could have but it's hard when they try to make a movie out of like a three season long thing into one hour and a half movie. No, no, no. It was just the first part. Oh, really? It was just... Sorry, I was trying to find that comment. I realized you got down the rabbit hole of anime, and I apologize to everyone at home. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck just happened? No, no. We were talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, my fucking God. Is... I am so sorry, everybody. I will never fucking turn away from, from this podcast 
ever again. That is my bad. I was trying to find some race baiting oh bullshit, my God, my and I God. let them fucking do whatever that was. Tim, maybe you, you can cut it out. I don't know. No, I will not be cutting it out. I was just about to start talking about Adventure Time as well. Oh, oh. My fucking God. Let's but just... I was going to analyze the movie. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie. You haven't Holy seen it? Shit. No. I heard that, it was super bad. It's so an I never M. Night watched. Shyamalan movie, and he was like, hey, what if we make this, but we take all of the humor out of it? Oh, really? So it's super serious? It's like really serious. Yeah. Wow. Our, but, bu- our buddy worked with M. Night Shyamalan, said he's an incredibly nice man. I'm sure he is. And he ha- has a guy who hangs out with him that says no for him. Okay. So they'll be like, hey, M. Night, can we do blah, blah, blah? And he goes, talk to him. And if he, he ever says talk to him, the guy's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but M. Night doesn't say no. He just points him to talk to a guy that says no for him. That's, oh, man. I that's would love, charming. That's that would gotta love, be the best gig. Well, I think it turns out at the end that the guy who says no is M. Night. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, probably your viewers do turn in Tune in to see um, race baiting tweets and <laughs> and not to hear and the anyway, white take two, on them. Two men talk about things that are passion they're passionate about. Anyway, everyone should have affirmative action friends on speed dial in case their party is too white. You don't have to anymore, says the Supreme Court. Okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Micah. Actually, you're not allowed to anymore, says the Supreme Court. <laughs> it's uh, ding ding. That was crazy that the Supreme Court said you can't invite black friends to your cook anymore yeah, right? i know and, and one of them's black i'm sure i'm sure clarence town was like i don't want to go to money with more of these honky ass <laughs> fucking no seasoning ass i don't know how he talks if if there was it's ever exactly a black like person that. who didn't season their food it would be clarence thomas oh yeah oh i'm sure it is uh well it's time for the news ding 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 ding, ding no it's ding. not oh. the news we didn't has even canceled oh Oh, yeah, the news got canceled. And instead, we have my new segment, which is really exciting. There is... We covered the we covered the stuff. I think we did it tactfully no, and in, non-ra- in a non-racial way. I said it in a terrible way about the black school, and we should cut that out. That will not be getting cut out. I do not want to do that kind of work. Instead of... Fuck. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm about to get... Fired. All right, I'll cut it out. Thank you. Just All remind right. me. So Arthur Aronson came up with Wait, a is this still hot takes? No, we're okay. moving on to a new segment. Okay. This is a new segment that Micah has created. I don't know what it is. It is called Everyone Falls in Love with Micah. Okay. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know when I first fell in love with Micah is when she was mean to Tim. <laughs> well, this is we're going to be doing this scientifically. There's a man named Arthur Aronson who came up with a list of 36 questions that you should ask on a date. And they say that by the time you get to the end of these questions, the person you are talking to will have fallen in love with you. Okay. So what, Early in the phone book. So we're, for each episode, we're going to do one question and we'll all answer it. And then you can fall in love with me slowly but surely. Oh, okay. okay. I'm and already in love you with only, you're the You're only going to get one question, but Tim will fall in love with me on air. Wow. Look at the cat. Speaking of being in love, she's just dead asleep under the freaking glass table. She's so cute. <laughs> she loved us so much that she died in her sleep. <laughs> All right. Here we question go. Question number one. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Whoa. Anybody in the world. So wait, the question that makes people fall in love with you is a bullshit corporate icebreaker? So they start with bullshit corporate icebreakers and then they get more probing as they go. How many questions are there? 36. Should we start at the end? I mean, I promise you, if I went out on a date and the woman asked me that question at the beginning. You would of the kill day. yourself. I would just, no, I would leave. Yeah. yeah. Would leave. I, would, I would leave and I would live <laughs> to date another day. Well, but, the, but that, that would, I, I, that would seriously, I think, preclude any further, like, yeah. But it wouldn't be the fact that she's reading a list of 36 questions designed by science to make you fall in love with her? Well, I think it would be because it was clear she was doing something like that. It's like, you've never wondered that. No one has ever wondered that. So, but yeah. That's I just do, been like something from a list. I wonder of what that you're person to ask. what person in the history of the world do you think wouldn't ask you that question at a dinner date? Right. <laughs> oh, good. See now we're thinking I'm falling a little bit in love with Tim. Oh. I mean all the people who I would want to like reanimate from the dead and have as a dinner companion would have no interest in having dinner with me. So oh, so you suffer from low self esteem. Interesting. I don't know if I suffer from low self-esteem, but say it's like 
okay, oh, it'd be cool to meet Albert Einstein. Like, Albert Einstein's going to come to my shitty house in the woods and, like, grill out on my falling down deck. Fuck yeah, dude. He has his tongue all stuck out. You could put ice cream on it and stuff. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Or he could come in the winter. We could get it stuck to the flagpole. Uh Guy's so smart. Doesn't know how to put his tongue in his freaking mouth. (laughs) Um, pretty funny. So you would pick Albert Einstein? That was just something that popped in my that's head. The most, that's the most exciting person you could ever think to talk to? Interesting. Are you answering this? I don't know. I would pick Ichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece, and I would talk <laughs> to him about One Piece, my favorite thing in the world. And I would pick the person that found Toe in the gutter, and I would ask about her early days. <laughs> You're the cat you would talk about. You've had the cat since she was like 10 days old. I've had her since she was... Eight weeks old, maybe 12 weeks. But that's a really good answer to but that But I would question. love to know her little origin story and where she comes from and what, why anyone would abandon such a cute baby. She was found in the trash. and she, In fact, she loves the trash. She sleeps in it. She does like the trash. She hangs out in it. She goes. She says she feels like it's home to her in the trash, which you'd think she'd like me more if she likes fucking garbage, but she doesn't. Well, are you guys hmm. in love with me yet? Mike, I mean, I'm feeling I'm feeling a tingle. I've got are? butterflies, but it might be for Mike. I don't know. Oh shit! Well, we're all falling in love with each other right now. Is I love thing. that. I'll be honest, Mike. I mean, that was a really compelling answer to that question. Was it? it really was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Way better than fucking Albert Einstein. I'm so fucking, stupid. Fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. What are you even going to talk to him about? Oh, hey, I really love your theory of relativity that I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. No, I get e equals mc squared. I understand. Yeah, I could have thought of that. Hey, man, what did you think about the Nazis calling all of your stuff Jew science and not using it to create the atomic bomb and that making the atomic bomb harder for them to rec- to create? Oh, man, Tim's got even better questions for <laughs> Einstein than I would. I'm so stupid. That's what I would ask. Well, I've That's been listening. pretty great, dude. I've been listening. I've been talking about it. I've been listening to the six-part series on uh, last podcast on the left about the manhattan project oh cool it's very good are you gonna see that movie about it yeah it comes out on micah's birthday next week next week's micah's birthday oh Oh, this episode comes out a day before two days before your fucking birthday bitch what do you think about that happy birthday to me that's what i think damn happy birthday micah damn um everyone schedule it in your calendars (laughs) when is it the 22nd 21st 21st. god damn it yeah nice we're going to the beach what beach i don't know listeners yeah don't try and get them to find me at the beach <laughs> they're gonna fucking be like there she is with their fucking paparazzi shit oh. <laughs> try, paps trying to get bikini photos of me nothing doing i want to fuck jonah hill someday <laughs> <laughs> See, all right that's the problem with twitter is that like now you know about that it's so Do you know what i mean i like, love that i know I about that i these are like two people like i'm supposed to have an opinion about Jonah, it's, these are like two people who I missing? don't. We have know. all the information that we need: the shared text of him being a fucking douche bill troll and her being a cunt for sharing him in the first place. Right, like <laughs> these are like two really unflattering characters. I I think he comes off worse than her, but that's just me. Well, sure, and that's why she was sharing that, right? I guess, but she got more hate than I think she was expecting. I don't know, man. I just like wish I didn't know. I honestly just wish I didn't know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, I wish. But I know, and I, I can't think it unknow. shines the light on misogyny. But I guess that's not an issue for you. I hate people telling me that I should care. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about some celebrity not letting his girlfriend get picture taken of her in their fucking bikini. Who gives a fuck? All of women. This is the oppression that's been going on, and we're trying to shed a light on it. And you guys don't care because it doesn't affect you, <clears throat> right? Nazis. It doesn't affect you either. You can go fucking. You could take a picture inside your pussy and show it to everyone. I don't give well, a fuck. Well, maybe shit. I don't want my standards so low forever. And what if I want a high value man that hates women? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so high value men who hate women yeah. should just keep it to themselves. That's yeah. Right. And dog shit trash that respect women mm-hmm. are fine for a little while. Yeah. For a little while. <laughs> you just a little basement cut. Well, That's all right with me. While, as long man. as we got this big apartment, I'm fine with it. Now, if the apartment had uh, AC, I'd be a little more fine with you it. You know, I was noticing earlier how warm it is in here. Well, yes. There's it's no windows really here uncomfortable. to add. We should. <laughs> I know. No, you guys. I'm so uncomfortable. You can right take now. your clothes off. We don't mind. Oh, okay. You can right. go. You can go stand in the bedroom if you need to. It's, there's the AC in there. Okay. We All should right. record no, it in I'm there. This I'm time. fine. I'm, We're I'm almost fine. done. 
We got our next segment. Oh, this is a very segment heavy show. It's reviews, reviews for, for the, the podcast. podcast. This is the best segment of the show. This is where I go on Apple iTunes and check out if we have any new five star reviews or any reviews. It's America or anywhere in the world. You can leave, you, you're a free person. You leave whatever stars you want. We don't have any. We don't God have any on it. Apple iTunes. Fuck. But no reviews. Not well. We have some reviews, but we've already read them. We don't have any new ones. But I do read the comments from the YouTube. And so on our last on our episode from last week with Tommy McNamara and Luke Monez, I have a couple of reviews. This one, the first one is from Alan Thick Dick. And it yeah. says, This was a super fun cast. Ah. So that's good. Well, yeah, Do you well, think he meant podcast or cast of characters? Yeah, I was thinking like you guys had like two rounds of auditions right. and you finally settled on uh, Luke and, and, and Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. yeah, we would have settled if that were the case. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Steve Bala says another good episode, but could have been great had the news segment. Fuck you, not, Steve. It's not been omitted. Fun guests love the wiki me this game, especially as a Kent State alum. You guys rock. Thanks for being a great hang. You're welcome, Steve Bala. And the news will be back soon. No, I'm sorry won't. to everyone who loves the news. I'm sorry that Micah is so good at Trivial Pursuit and Tim sucks at it and can never win. Yes, but also I'm sorry that she's. Keeping something from the listeners that they love so much. This but is a show. Soon they'll love the new segment because it's making them fall in love with it. We can have both segments. No, I don't want the news. I hate it and it's bad. And everyone else hates it too. And they're only saying they like it to troll me. Um, I, I, um, I Do you need an exa- example of no. the news? Here's what he does. He picks a news story. Mm-hmm. The headline is the most interesting part of the story. And then mm-hmm. we have to suffer through him trying to read it, but he can't read it. Yeah, okay. That sucks. That sounds like a pretty sweet seg. <laughs> it's funny. It's good. A sweet uh, Learning seg disabled man my... trying to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it's funny, said everyone in the comments. No. Thank you. Uh, Tarman768 says, five stars, good time. He also, and then he says again, he also reported on that certain day in January. I don't know what that means. I January watched, 6th? I guess so, but I don't know what he's referring to. He's talking about the insurrection? Yes, but I don't know in the episode what he's referring to. Were we talking about Chrissy Mayer at all? No, we didn't. No, I don't think we talked about Chrissy Mayer at all. Then I don't know. Uh, and then Alex says... Uh, to be quite honest, I'd rather listen to Tim's seemingly unrelated fun stories than guess the singer state segment. So Alex didn't like the wiki me this game, but did like my story about a woman getting beat up by two guys. So there we go. There's that. Well, I guess we know what Alex is into. <laughs> <laughs> a lady got beat up by two guys in front of the gutter the other week. I told it last week, but they got they called the cops. Guys got arrested. All right, Mike, with that, what a perfect transition into. <laughs> <laughs> this is a time for oh, you. We're to... not going to beat up Mike, are we? No, no, no. Oh, Good luck. Not, not, not now that I'm mildly in love with her after that question. Thank you. you know, uh, that question really did make me fall a little bit in love. I'll, honest, I'll be honest with both of you. Oh, I like that. It's working. I just feel like I'm, so, like, I'm just like not, you know, I just feel like you're <laughs> both out of my league a little bit. That's yeah. not I feel true so bad I mean, about my own answer. We're no Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, me either. But Mike, uh, Mike, this is a, a, it's hard for me to get Micah and my, and I want to say Micah and then I want to say Mike forever. I'm getting, I'm fucking up. Uh, this is either, you can tell us a fun party story or a tip for being a great hang I got, or both. All right. I got a tip for being a good oh, hang. Yeah. All right. Here's a tip for being a good hang. You want to be a good hang? Get you a ping pong table. That is my Whoa, tip. Oh, a new tip. We have not had that one. Get you a ping pong table. Now, a lot of people will say, I don't have enough room in my house for a ping pong table. Lose your bed. A ping pong table is about the same size and you can sleep underneath it. Right. There's nothing like hanging out, you playing ping pong. You can sleep underneath it. <laughs> Not even on it. Oh, no, no, no. Underneath no. it. <laughs> well, no, the fucking weird beams and shit. No, no, you can't sleep on top. Of, you'll mess up the net. But if you sleep, <laughs> if you sleep underneath... It's fine, and you feel protected, you know. You feel protected by the ping pong Pop table. Pop quiz, do you have a ping pong table? I don't, but I'm not uh-huh. a great hang. Yeah. I yeah. grew up with a ping pong table, and those were always the best hangs. Like, everyone always wanted to come. They were like, where should we go? And it was always, oh, let's go to Mike's house. Because Mike's got a ping pong table. We would smoke blunts down there. 
One time we laced one of the blunts with a little bit of cocaine. Oh, wow. Now you're speaking my down language. There. Oh, yeah. Also, if you want to be a good hand, get you some cocaine. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's also – that. But, I, but ping pong table is my advice. And you might say, oh, my apartment's too small. I live in New York. Leave New York. Move to Alabama. Get a ping pong table. You'll be happier. Make new friends. Make new friends. Ping pong friends. It's so easy to make friends with a ping pong table. Yeah. You know, my dad's always had one, and he always had people around, you know, mostly strippers and uh, whores. But, mm-hmm. you know, That's I well, bet they okay. had a good time after I bet they, they were, were forced a good to fuck him. Hang. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now people are all playing big ping pong, pickleball. Forced or paid. I think when they are paid, that's not forced. Yeah. Except one time, my dad did have this stripper come over, and her boyfriend sat in the kitchen drinking snake bites, which is just tequila with when you, and like a, you bite a lime afterward. Okay. Uh, that's so just he that's he was sort of that, like that sounds like more of a pimp than a boyfriend. Well, it's also hard to the, say at that. It sounds point. more yeah. like drinking tequila than drinking snake. Bites. I forget what made <laughs> a snake bite. It might have been like lime juice. It was, there was something like. It was something one level above just doing shots with a line. Okay. I forget what it was. I think it was a pimp, to be honest. I don't know if it was, How old were you when he told you it was a boyfriend? This was, um, I guess I was 18. Yeah. I was home, I was home for Thanksgiving. I feel this like it Thanksgiving a- Day. Oh, okay. At Thanksgiving Day, there was a pimp at your house? Wait, so your dad would invite whores over when you were there? Yeah. Can you believe that shit? That's the, yeah. I mean,. He yes. didn't say, this is my whore. He would introduce her with some fake name. Okay. Oh, yeah. Your dad's a, your dad's kind of a good hang, huh? Yeah, the, he had a ping pong table. Yeah, okay. He did have a ping pong so you table. See what I'm saying. And a foosball table and a pool table. It was a party house. See, I, that's the thing. Foosball, you keep the foosball. And a pool. Keep the pool table. It's all about the ping pong. Every bar in America has a pool table. No bar has a ping pong table. And ping pong is so much more fun. It's a much better hang because when you're playing ping pong, with, first of all, you can take turns, right? You rotate, you play king of the table. But when you're playing ping pong with someone and the conversation flows, the personality of the person mm. is totally evident in their style of play. Yeah. And so you really get to know, because men aren't good at talking. Oh. Know? But if you play ping yeah, pong with another man. Yeah, they don't just fucking man, scream all the time like women. Right, right, right. <laughs> they know how to keep their mouths shut. They're only good at talking in the movies, I guess. <laughs> that's right. Another, that's right. another, another <laughs> falsity. That's right. Another, right. That's just, ma- it's just wishful. Yeah, but what about that misrepresentation? Fantasy. You're like, it also misrepresents men as being able to talk. To good. express their yeah. emotions. or Yeah. A lot, of, also a lot, lot of, of veins to mine. A lot, lot of veins to uh, mine. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah. All right. We have two more segments. Mike, you have been an absolutely fantastic guest. Am I doing well? I feel like I'm not doing very well. This what is the best mean? episode we've no. ever done. This I'm is kidding. an incredible episode. No, I'm just, remember we were playing the game, I have low self-esteem. Oh. <laughs> it's a game I play. It's not how well, I really feel. we do really have feel. Einstein coming in next. Oh, god damn it. That's right. Black Einstein. <laughs> So every, so it's cool for Twitter. Right. Every time I go to a party, I bring my friend Black Einstein. <laughs> People call him Blindstein. He gets freaking pissed. Then we have to leave. Yeah. But he doesn't like f- it because he can <laughs> see just fine. <laughs> uh, next segment, Speak Ill of the Dead. Okay. This is where we talk shit about a dead person. You can talk shit about any dead person you want. Micah, did you come up with anybody? I did. Tim always thinks I'm not going to because I never do. Okay, great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do always think you're not going to because you never do. But today I did. I, it is, I Today I'm going to talk about a person who died on this very day over 100 years ago, and that is Alexander Hamilton. Whoa. Alexander yeah, he Ham- was a piece of shit. He was a fucking huge piece of shit. First of all, he died in New Jersey. Gross. Gross. Oh, wow. You're supposed to be a founding father, and yet you're in New Jersey, and this is the man we're supposed to be looking up to? Fucking disgusting. Second of all. What if that was the worst thing he did? That is the, <laughs> that is the I mean, I'm fucking disgusted by it. No, but the, you're right. The worst thing he did was inspire that musical and make Lin-Manuel Miranda a millionaire. And I don't like it when other people are millionaires who aren't me. Okay? Yeah, that is gross, too. If you're a millionaire, you're a piece of shit. Unless you're me, and then it's cool. Yeah. So fuck you, Alexander Hamilton. I hope you're fucking trading money with the devil in hell. Yeah, I hope the devil's butt fucking you with ten dollar bills, you piece of shit. That's you, right. You want to know something funny? When you said Alexander Hamilton, I was thinking Andrew Jackson. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, Alexander Hamilton wasn't so bad. Yeah, but he was still pretty bad. Yeah. 
Yeah, rest in piss, Alexander Hamilton. You, you couldn't even you couldn't even fucking become president, you dumb fuck. Fucking die. Be dead. I think he was born in the um like Barbados or something. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, I don't know if he was allowed to be a, a He was president. allowed. Oh, he was at that yeah. time. But yeah, he's uh he's an island man. He's an island boy. Yeah, he was a yeah, he could have been, but he he blew it. Mike, who you got? All right, you know who I think sucks? All I right. think uh, Jim Morrison fucking sucks. Whoa, yeah, nice. Fuck I you. think he sucks so bad. We haven't had a Jim Morrison on here. This is sick. And this is this is this is why I think he sucks. Okay, because the Doors Sucked. were no. Oh. <laughs> the Doors were a great fucking band, and he ruined them. Like the band is great. That dude who played the guitar, yep. the guy who you know the, the, other, bass, the other people whose names bass. we don't know. Yeah. No, right. And we only know Jim Morrison. Fuck that guy. So there was this awesome band. And then this just drunk asshole, like bad open mic poet struts out on stage. Uh, What is it? Uh, There's a killer on the road. His brain is squirming like a toad. Like, are you even fucking trying? Is that the lyric? Yeah. it's like He's a bad open mic poet. And people still... And he got buried in fucking Paris. How pretentious is I that? I hate that. You know I fucking hate that. I fucking hate France. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> they shushed me far too many times. But France. he's not even French. He's just like, I want to be buried in Ugh. Paris. That's like the New Jersey of Europe. Totally. <laughs> People are still leaving flowers on his grave. Yeah. He sucks. Yeah. Jim Morrison fucking sucks ass. Yeah. And the doors suck too. You know what? The doors, but the band was good. Like, if they'd had a good singer, it would have been a good band. The Doors is, like, the only band where it's totally accept. You can be like, oh, I love The Doors. And it's totally acceptable to, like, only have The Doors' greatest hits. Like, no one has all their albums. That's, like, yeah. the only band where... It- I mean, no one has any albums anymore, I guess. Yeah, that's true. But that's true. my thing. Anyway. Well, yeah, you hear on. that, Jim Morrison? I hope the devil's butt-fucking you to death with a bunch of fucking champagne or french shit fuck you i i hope not he'd probably like it yeah actually i hope uh the devil's doing something you don't like yeah. rest in peace <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope the devil i hope you can't get any play from the devil <laughs> yeah dude i hope the devil's fucking negging your ass you can't get shit from him he's just out there not paying attention to you at all uh you know what i'm gonna talk shit about today Betsy Ross. Oh, Oh, wow. That's right. This bitch just made a flag. Who gives a fucking shit? (laughs) Oh, you made a little flag for the country? I make flags all the time. People don't like them, but I make them, Mm -hmm. and they fucking suck. And your flag actually kind of fucking sucked, too. And you know what? You were busted. I looked up a couple of paintings of her. Nasty. She looked like a gross-ass bitch, and she was probably making the flag so that people could put it over her head and bang her. Anyway, yeah, yeah, Betsy Ross dress for less. <laughs> <laughs> she should have been hotter. What yeah. a stupid bitch. That's right. Betsy Ross, you ain't hot. I hope the devil's also giving you no play. And I hope you rest in piss. And that's it. That was good. I think people are really going to like that one. <laughs> Is that it, Tim? That's it. That's it. Our last segment. Oh, it's all we've got left. Sign offs. This is where we do our sign offs. So I'll do mine first. Signing off, it is I, the greatest man to have ever lived. Cool guy, great newscaster, father of five, a sweet, sweet boy, Timothy Grady McLaughlin II. And signing off, it is me, the nicest woman who has ever lived, even though she can never shut the fuck up because she's just (laughs) a dumb, stupid woman who has no representation in movies. That's right. It is me, the woman who cannot pass the Bechdel test because of its inherent unpassability. It is I, Toei's mother, Mike's friend, Timmy's friend and girlfriend, and and your friend and podcast host, Micah Fox. Oh, shit. I'm stroking out because I'm peeking. <laughs> Shouldn't have had that orange juice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and now I have to sign off? Yeah, yeah, you guys say signing off and then do your little sign off. Okay, signing off. It is I, Mike Leibovitz. Pretty good podcast guest, but mm-hmm. could have been better if I hadn't said that. I still feel bad about saying that. Uh, 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 well, Albert Einstein. God, there's got to be someone better to have dinner with. Uh <laughs> Um, friends with, yeah, fallen in love with Micah, been in love with Tim. Yes. I've been touching his thigh a lot. 
Came I've been here. acting like it doesn't bother me, even though I hate being touched by anyone ever. Do you really? <laughs> Would you like me to stop doing no, it? No, you're fine. Okay, I'm going to keep touching him because he said I could. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? Mike, it is I, Mike Leibovitz, gainer of affirmative consent from Tim McLaughlin. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I have a father. Well, he's dead. And, <laughs> uh, but I am one, too. And thank you for watching me. And I hope you guys have a... Great rest of the day.